Before the success stories, the progress, there was you. You who made a choice to grow, to inspire, to overcome your own challenges. At NASM, we're in service of your limitless potential because when you keep growing, we all get stronger and we'll never stop making your journey our mission. Join the fitness leader. Become a fitness leader. Become a certified personal trainer. You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Welcome to this episode of Random Fit with my co-host Wendy Batts and I myself, Ken Miller. Wendy, how are you doing? I am good, Ken. How are you? I am great, especially when it comes to this episode and what we're going to talk about today with exercise snacks and we're not we're not talking about what snacks you're going to eat before the workout uh <laughs> snacks all right the, uh, so i think we workout. should take a step back yeah. because that he's saying this because i was one of those people when he said we're talking about exercise snacks i was like oh my gosh i went to the store and i bought this <laughs> and i have been eating this before i work out and i'm eating this after and in between i'm not eating anything during the exercise like my workout he, he and all ken said was y'all need to step back yes. this is not remotely close Slow to down. what we're talking about today <laughs> we're talking about exercise snack so this this is a term that's that's been floating around so wendy I, you know you know that i like to listen to other podcasts you know I'll listen to kelly starrett i'll listen to our our, our friend and and associate uh, rick ritchie and you know beyond the abstract and all the things that are out there and and when it comes to exercise it's a term that's been floating around out there i think it's, it's been more in my face over the last year or so. Now, I'm not sure what your exposure, well, it's probably not that high if you're thinking exercise snacks is like, I, I like to have an apple after workout. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, the idea of, 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 of integrating movement intermittently throughout the day. And when, when I actually saw this study that came out in 20, January, 2022, it just, I just like, oh, I've been thinking about exercise snacks all wrong when it comes to movement right so well, i think it's yeah. i think it's important too when we when we really take a couple steps back i mean all the re there's a ton of research out there and when we started talking about the topics of what did we want to do for 2024 how did we want to start the year and you first mentioned exercise snacks i feel like as soon as you said that i have heard more and more and more people talk about it especially when they're talking about mm -hmm. cardio health and they're really talking about zone training and different ways to get people moving and right. so i think when we're when when you define what an exercise snack is, we're talking about these short bursts of physical activity that you're doing throughout the day versus the typical, we hear we need to be moving, what is it, 150 minutes, mm -hmm. so many times a week, and there's differences between vigorous activity and moderate activity. They kind of move all of that aside. And so there's still a lot more research that needs to be done. However, right. what they're finding in multiple research articles that are out there is that you know, as Rick Ritchie says, a whole lot of something's better than a whole lot of nothing. And that really is holding true. And what you're seeing on people's blood levels, people that have some sort of diabetes, all of this, or, or extremely sedentary, all of this is showing huge improvements throughout all different ages. Um, yeah. And I think that this is going to be something that we're going to hear more and more about. Yeah. And just so you know, when I, when I first read this and i started looking up more information on exercise snack. i and i i dropped and gave 20 push-ups right i didn't do, <laughs> did do push-ups i did squats you, no, you I did to, what are you doing <laughs> yeah it's like it's like oh that's all it takes and i guess do this 10 times a day but it when it comes to again new year's resolutions are out there and people well not not even just that People are making changes in the beginning of the year. They've evaluated their lives. They're just finally listening to what their doctors, their spouses are telling them. You got to get in better shape. You know, you were a little breath the last time you took a walk. So what are you going to do about it? Well, as you said, Wendy, 
the 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 standard now or the protocol has been recommended 150 to 300 minutes a week for for maintaining health and wellness well you look at 300 minutes a week i'm like i don't have 10 minutes to scratch my head right <laughs> you know for for the week so how do you you know it becomes an overwhelming thought of well especially if you're a perfectionist like me like if if i'm not going to do this right i'm not going to do it at all so if i'm not going to get my 150 i'm just not going to start is is subconsciously what the idea is but when you look at the things that you just talked about wendy if you did these intermittent bouts of movement like like you, you did air squats i did push-ups if you do that for between a minute two minutes sprinkled throughout the day that cardiorespiratory fitness has been shown to benefit so resting heart rate goes down uh, <clears throat> for one general feeling of health and wellness goes up when you've been able to just sprinkle the day at least a minute once an hour of a vigorous a vigorous activity is what is what they what they the the research is showing and as I was trying to say at the beginning of, of, the, of this episode, I had been thinking about movement, exercise, movement snacks, wrong ever since the thought, you know, because what, what do you do when you have a, a, a client who sits behind the computer all day? What, what, do you, what do you, Wendy Bats, tell your clients to do to kind of break that cycle of sitting down? I tell them to set an alarm and then get up and stretch and then maybe do, you know, go walk around. I don't tell them to do one minute of vigorous exercise. Right. Yeah. Mine's been pull out, pull out the, the hypervolt and, <laughs> you know, just get your neck, get your thighs, do a standing hip flexor stretch and then get right back to it. So, I mean, and, and share your insights with me when you read this. I was like, yeah, I'm just doing it wrong. I mean, mm -hmm. not that we're doing it wrong, but we're just get we're breaking the cycle of sitting. Right. And that's all you're doing. But if we're really talking about improving health, not just trying to survive and stay away from pain, if we're trying to improve health and wellness. Yeah, this is a different ballgame. Well, and and I thought it was interesting because, you know, what is the number one barrier that that you get from your clients? Like, what do you feel uh -huh. like when you're starting to sit down and you're talking to them and you're asking them, you know, why now or what has kept you from working out? Yeah. What what you pretty much said it before. Yeah. But what it's, is it's it? time? I don't time. I don't I don't have 45 minutes. I don't have the time. Yeah. I don't yeah. have the time. And then and then number two, a lot of it, too, is if they don't have the time or they can't afford a gym or they 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 don't have equipment or they want something that they can do on their own they're still not going to make the time and they're going to find excuses. Well, this is one of the things. And in the research that we found, they know all of this. And so what they're trying to do is provide different um, choices in the exercise snacks of what is available to mm -hmm. either people that are at work, people that are at home or whatever the case may be. So one of the things that they tell you to do, and one of the studies that actually use this, well, multiple studies was running the stairs. Yep. You know, for one minute, you know, or take 60 steps as fast as you can take three flights of stairs and you're going to do that periodically or, you know, throughout the day. It doesn't have to even be every like one minute or however many minutes mm -hmm. through, you know, every single hour. But if you're doing this, you know, three to eight times a day and you hadn't been doing it at all, that is the vigorous ex like activity or high intensity activity because they want right. you sprinting up and down those stairs. Yep. And yeah. so... So and I tried that, was, that too. <laughs> and, and you tried that too. I, yeah, I gotta, I gotta do more than that. Right. Um, but the, the, the idea of this, you brought it up, Wendy, it's the sprinting up the stairs, not just taking the elevator or not just taking the stairs when you're going from the parking lot and, and avoiding the elevator, you are sprinting. And I think that they did, uh, three flights of stairs, three stories worth of stairs. Mm -hmm. Then they did, uh, pushups uh and lunges on top of on top of all that so for their bouts of exercise for their exercise snacks that's where they 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 ran up and down the stairs for three flights or down and up 
<laughs> and then they did the squats and then they did the push-ups and then and, they well they i think they did it actually before is that was their <laughs> dynamic warm-up that was their dynamic did, warm-up yeah right. so it was 10 jumping jacks 10 air squats jump, yeah. and then five lunges and then they went and sprinted and then they would maybe do like a a minute walk cool down and that's it and so yeah. you know when you're thinking about that how quick can you do this and the dynamic when you're talking just once again as a definition we're talking dynamic warm up we're talking about full available range of motion so these aren't done very fast they're just trying to get your body to move and if you've been sedentary or you've been sitting in front of your computer just get up and do you know slowly just 10 squats then do your 10 jumping jacks mm -hmm. and then do your five lunges nice and controlled run those stairs you know so they'll say basically 60 steps is what they want you to do and then do a one minute cool down and you should be able to do that in less than five minutes. But if you only have time to do some some of it, do the dynamic warm up, and then do something really quick, and then go run the stairs. But sprint the stairs, and then right. do that a couple yeah. times, and then work your way up. That's one of the things I think I'm going to start to incorporate with my clients. I want to see if this works. And they did this for what? How many weeks? Um, Six. Yeah, I think is what. It, yeah, when they when they evaluated when they did the the initial. Um, assessments and then the follow-up evaluation was six weeks later and all the micro all the markers that they were looking for um improved health-wise mm -hmm. right yeah. with just those those little little bouts of, of movement but the the other thing that um benefited the the aspect of incorporating these exercise snacks is what it did for blood sugar re regulation so <clears throat> the the timing of it so not just you know, like what you said, Wendy, you know, every hour you just have your client set an alarm and they go ahead and do something, they move. But now if you look at um, something that I was I was reading was when you look at a about of an exercise snack, you do what you just did, a sprint, push ups, lunges before you have a meal as well as after you have a meal. It was favorable results, especially when it came to um monitoring um reg blood blood sugar regulation especially those with type 2 and type 1 i know our notes say type 2 diabetes but also beneficial for those with type 1 uh, diabetes as well so blood sugar regulation especially those um with with that situation going on is it was definitely beneficial when it came to how they manage the blood sugar so that was that was one thing that really caught my eye it's not just from a cardiorespiratory fitness standpoint, but a blood sugar regulation standpoint as well. So uh, big benefits all around from, from that vantage point. Well, and the mood enhancement, that one <clears throat> caught my eye too, because I know after I've been on the computer, I can get real snappy because I've just been staring at a screen <laughs> and I'm just frustrated with whatever it is that I'm working on. Yeah. Because I just haven't had any other stimulation other than what I've been focusing on. And so if somebody comes through the door and asks me a question, I may, I may snap at them, not intentionally, but I just in this like mind and move, you know, just, I'm just not in a good place. And so they'll tell you if you do this, that it has shown and we know this because movement is medicine. We always say it, but it does so much, even in those small doses to help someone, you know, their mental well-being because it just changes the dynamic. It refreshes your brain, actually. So when you go back to whatever it was that you were doing on the computer or sitting down or whatever, you're actually more focused and you have better results in what you're doing as well. So I found that fascinating. Like, oh, and of course, my husband's like, you should really try that. So <laughs> try that and then let's yeah. see. <laughs> the, the next time he knocks on your office door, he goes, have you sprinted yet? Yes. Have Did you, you have your snack? Yeah, if not, you, you should do you, that and then we'll talk. And then, yeah, I'll be back in two minutes after you do your air squats. Well, and, you know, another thing that I, I thought was interesting is because, you know, when you're going through and, and Ken and I really love to, to kind of dive deep into the research to find out things. And that's why we bring this to you. Um, it's one of those that I feel like as we read through it, I want to find out, well, is this does it have to be the stairs? Does it have to be? Because if you read other research, it's saying that other ways to do the sprints to get that vigorous activity is utilizing a spin bike or some sort of aerodyne bike or something that's really that you're doing as fast as you can for a certain amount of time. Now, one thing that I haven't seen in, in all the research that I found, and so I do want to throw this out there, is there's not a 
specific time that is going to work for everyone. There's not a certain amount of exercise snacks that's going to work for everyone. And there's not a particular, you know, um, you need to do the stairs. You need to do the bike. That's the only thing that's going to work for you. Because right. when you're looking at all the different research, it's saying what is going to get your heart rate elevated to what's really intense for you. And that's what you can do. And then also think about available equipment of what's going to be the best for your clients. So that way there's no excuses mm -hmm. because all of this in the purpose of the exercise snacks is to get sedentary people moving multiple times throughout the day at home, at school or at work. And so, you know, keep that in mind if you're going to start talking to your clients about these exercise snacks, because I think I'm going to do a challenge. Like how many exercise snacks did you do? And they have to like, OK, and get ready to go. And then they have to send yeah. a text or a video or something. Boom. There you go. That's, Boom. you know, because it's funny because I just I had a client that his his only time that he moves is during our once a week workout session. So the. You know, our last conversation, especially after having read this, it was just, hey, listen, Dan, all, all you got to do is just get your get your 10 push ups, 10 squats and then sit back down again, whatever, you know, because he's got an administrative um, <clears throat> he's got he's got an administrative job and he's so he sits down behind the computer a lot. So this is this is where that homework assignment and we texted the other day. You know, did you get your exercise snack in today? He's like, not yet, right? So it's still a work in progress and it's still something that you have to break momentum when it comes to incorporating a habit. It's like, to your point, Wendy, you have to find what works for that individual. We're still finding it for Dan, but uh, it, it is something that, you know, it's, 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 it's a search. It's a search. What are you going to do? What's going to be your go-to? So as we're here talking about exercise snacks on Random Fit with both Randy Wendy Batts and I, Ken Miller, we're talking about finding solutions, individualized solutions that help you work on your cardiorespiratory fitness, little bouts at a time when it comes to move, high intensity movements. So this is this again, it's 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 great information. It's great that the information, the, the research is out there. And as as they say in, in the, the couple studies that I had a chance to read in depth, there's there's a lot more that needs to be done to to verify and validate just because the sample sizes have just not been to a huge scale but what they have been finding so far is is favorable for the for the benefit of of activity yeah and and i also <clears throat> want to i think it's important to note too that we still want our clients to be able to do, you know, 30 minute walks or different types of things for yeah. a longer duration as well. However, what the exercise snacks purposes are, are to help with those numbers of increasing, trying to get so many minutes in per week to try to hit the, the recommended, you know, uh, the recommended amount of minutes that you're supposed to have for moderate and vigorous exercise in order to try to, to maintain your health goals and your fitness goals and, and think about cardio health and so or heart health. So when you're thinking about it too, you don't want to tell your clients, hey, these exercise snacks are going to be what we're going to do and that's it. But it's one of those things to help those, or, you know, to help with the barriers that you're going to have. Or if you're a fitness enthusiast listening to us on Random Fit, again, thank you for doing that. However, yeah. we also want you to know that just a little bit of something as hard as you can, it's not going to make you super sweaty. It's not going to make you, a comp you know, where you've got to completely change your outfit or your wardrobe, but it's going to help you in so many ways, health wise, mentally, physically. And it's going to help also if you're doing this, you can get your other quote co-workers to do it or you can get the kids to do it with you. So it's actually a lot of fun, too. And I think one of the things that just can't be we can't misinterpret what we're saying here, Wendy, is like we're not saying these one minute bouts or these two minute bouts 10 times a day. That, that's all you got to do. I think that's the opposite of what we're saying. We're just trying to address one of the, the objections, if you will, or one of the barriers to people getting in better shape, which is time, um, time and access. When you talked about body weight exercises. We're, we're, we're not saying in any way, shape or form, well, do these 10 minutes because that 150 minutes that you need to bank by the end of the week, um, it's the same thing because it's not. We're just saying when you don't have a lot of time, 
we you can have some benef benefit physically by doing these little bouts. But when you do have the time, yeah, get that 20 to 30 minutes outside, go for an outside run, go on the treadmill, do your do your uh, resistance training routine, um, get your workout in when you can. But this is this is somewhat the next best thing for somebody who can be short on time. And, and you know, Wendy, with with my facility, with the travel that we do every now and then, um, sitting down with you doing this podcast, my two kids, their activities. Hey, if there's anybody that's short on time, it's me, but I still try and get my, you know, 60, 60 minute workouts when I can. But this is definitely a great augment to that. Oh, hundred percent. And like I said, now that I kind of know about it, I'm all into it. Like now this is maybe my thing. <laughs> and so I got up super early this morning. I did my workout, did my cardio, but I'm going to try to see if I can run the stairs as fast as I can a couple of times throughout the day, just to, again, you know, 150 minutes of moderate to intense exercise. Again, those were the guidelines that are given to us. How can we hit those and chop down at the minutes? So I, that's going to be my challenge for all of you that are listening to us today on Random Fit. Uh, exercise snacks, guys, I'm telling you, not about food, but the little nuggets, as Ken was saying, because I said nuggets. And again, he asked me if I was hungry for chicken nuggets, um, which the answer to that is probably always yes. Um, but these little exercise snacks can really help somebody, especially you know, like you just said, break barriers, get them moving, you know, maybe reduce the amount of stress that they have at work, help somebody, especially some of the elder population, because again, exercise snacks and vigorous exercise for them is going to look different than what it is for me or Ken, or even yourself. So, you know, always keep it safe, always think it through, but just know these are options for you personally or for your clients, if you're a trainer. And, um, and Ken, I really enjoyed this. Like when you said, it, it kind of opened my eyes up to something completely yeah. different. Our producer as well, because he thought Wendy's talking about food again. And <laughs> I love food, y'all. If you don't know that, you do now. Love it. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, if, and if you like that, if you like to have that apple at the end of your work, yeah, just have that exercise snack after your exercise snack. So <laughs> just don't have too many of them. Just don't, yeah, <laughs> just just don't, just don't do it. But it's it's again, we're just we're just here to support the fact that. You just got to move, find a, find a way that works for you. Just make sure you're getting your heart rate up. It doesn't have to be anything. I mean, Wendy, you, you, when we first saw this and read it, you did one thing and I did another. So for you, that's for you uh, listeners out there that are listening, find something that, you know, it's, it's not going to be too like, ah, oh, oh, I got to do this for a minute. No, just, hey, just something that you can do. Just that ah, it's a minute. Right. It's just go minute. ahead. And, and again, minute. just some options and ideas. <laughs> High knees, stairs, if you have access to a bike, body weight squats, lunges, mm -hmm. going for a quick paced walk. Again, something different from your activities of daily living, but done at a faster, intense pace. That's what you want to keep in mind. What can you do for one quick burst and then and then just do that the whole day and then switch to something different so you don't get bored. Yeah. But get your workout in. Still get your workout in. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So, Wendy, thanks for your insight and uh, sharing your thoughts on exercise snacks, not the food snacks, the exercise snacks. So for these of you listening to us here on Random Fit, thank you so much for listening to us here, both Wendy Batts and I, Ken Miller, uh, as we love sharing information, our insights when it comes to random fitness. So if you like what you heard today, like, follow, share, subscribe, download, rate, and more importantly, comment. Let us know what you want us to talk about, and we will do the best we can to get that on our next episode of Random Fit. So until next time, everybody, take care and be well.